Hi boys and girls and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you my experience with shrinking PETG tubing. Long story short, um, the experience was not very pleasant. You remember T900 build? Yep, that one. T900 does have two water cooling loops, one for the CPU and VRMs and one for the GPUs. I used PTG tubing from Bitspower and a bunch of random compression fittings from Fantex, EK Waterblocks and XSPC. And if you want a bit more details about the fittings, I'll drop the information down in the description. And don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming any manufacturers because quite frankly, I never had any problems with any of the parts. However, I ended up with a leak. Uh, largely very dangerous. Who is this? What's your operating number? Uh... Luckily for me, the leak was on the lowest part of the GPU loop and uh, none of the components were damaged, except of the floor. I noticed the leak. Hold on, no. I noticed the bubbles in the reservoir, which in my case means that the liquid levels are dropping down. You might be asking, why would I ever keep an eye on the levels in the reservoir? I mean, who does that? And the answer is pretty simple. In my case, the reservoir is fitted upside down and it does not have the internal inlet tube, which means it needs to be filled up completely so there's no air in the reservoir. And if there is air in the reservoir, then, well, it's bubbling. Which looks pretty nice. But it's quite annoying. So imagine my surprise when I open the reservoir port to top up the system and suddenly... So after a quick mop-up session, I drained the system, I took apart the loop and this is what I found. I was a bit shocked that PTG tubing deforms inside the compression fittings. I've never seen that before and my GPU loop never runs higher than probably 50 degrees Celsius. But according to the EK Wasserblocks blog, what they're saying is that the PTG can deform if the temperatures are running above 40 degrees Celsius. So what temperatures are safe for PTG tubing? To be honest, I do not have answer to this question, but I tend to find out probably in the next video. So you may ask yourself, how can you avoid these type of problems? Well, EK Waterblocks supposedly do have a solution, a working solution for this problem. This tiny plastic insert, according to EK Waterblocks, will keep your PTG tubing in the right shape and will not allow it to be deformed inside the compression fitting. I personally never tried them myself, so I cannot comment on performance of this part. Each of these plastic inserts are around four and a half pounds or roughly about five and a half dollars and can sum up to significant amount of money, especially if you run in a complex loop or two loops like in my case. I would need 30 of them in my system, which sums up to about 150 pounds or roughly about $170, which if you think about it, $170 for just plastic inserts? Mm, is it really worth it? So if you are on really, really, really tight budget and you cannot afford it, then you do have a few options. First one, get yourself a good insurance and learn how to pray just in case if your loop starts to leak and creates a short circuit and burns down the house and rest of the neighborhood. Another option would be not to use PETG, just use like acrylic or glass or any of the metal tubing that's available on the market. Obviously, you can go with soft tubing as well. But probably one of the best solutions would be just to keep an eye on the temps and if you do run the OC systems and the temps are quite high and you run the systems for a longer period of time, do a regular maintenance on your loop. And no, that doesn't mean that every time you do a maintenance, you need to bend the tubes again and again and again. You can rework them. That's not really a problem. Here's a quick tip how to do that. The process itself is almost the same as when you bend the PTG tubing. 
Use the heat gun and correct diameter silicon insert. You don't really need to bend or flex the tube at all, just heat it up. As you can see in this super high quality video, I am heating up the tube at approximately 90 degrees angle. It is important to not apply too much heat on the end of the tube because the edges are prone to warp when heating. Keep an eye on the deformed area and rotate the tube so that the heat is applied consistently. You will notice when PETG will reach its melting point, the formed area will just disappear. Here's a quick comparison of before and after. Here's another comparison. This side has been reworked. As you can see, there's no deformation. And this side is still deformed. You can see that the reworked side fits really, really snug into the fitting and there's almost no play. But when we do the same thing with the deformed side, you can tell that there's plenty of play and that would definitely create a leak. So this is it for the video and hopefully this is not going to discourage you from building your amazing rigs using a PTG tubing going forward. And as always, if you like the content, click that subscribe button. If you wish to see these videos again and don't miss any of them, well, click the notification button as well. So stay tuned guys and I'll see you in the next one.